This miner was hacked and it took me two days to notice. In this video, I'll show you how to recover from an incident like this and also methods to be alerted if you're being attacked. This is a gold shell miner. And when it contacted support, they already knew how to recover from this incident. And it had to be a hard reset with loading new firmware on the device. There's a few things that we're gonna need to do. And one is to burn an image on a micro SD card, kind of like the one over here. And then when we have that image burnt, we're gonna be inserting it into the micro SD slot right there. And then we're going to power cycle the device, boot it up, confirm that it's reset completely, and then get back to mining. I'm really trying to understand how the attack happened because I changed the password. It has its own IP. It's behind a firewall. It's on a secure network. My suspicion is it might have something to do with uh, Gold Chow Cloud Service, but I'm not really sure. If you know, please let me know in the description because I'd really like to get to the root cause of this. A few of my miners were attacked, including my Kitty Box Pro and this one. So this is the Gold Shell Mini Doge Pro, and I just plugged it in, so there's no statistics yet. I'm gonna go over to the mining section, and you can see that there is three pools added in here. None of these are mine. My pool was actually removed, and these were put in its place. I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove these and remove them all. And in just a few moments, they'll automatically be added back on here. All three of them, once again, have been added in here. Uh, and this one just went online. And this will continuously happen. It doesn't matter how many times you remove it. You can even go into system. Down here, you can do a factory reset. Even though you factory reset it, it'll go back to the same state that it is right now with these three pools automatically added to it. So I've tried that. I've also gone in here and I did a firmware update that didn't do it at all. And that's when I contacted Goldshell. And that's when they gave me the instructions to go ahead and burn an image on a micro SD card and completely restore my miner. So I have the Rufus tool right over here. This is to help me make my image file and put it on a micro SD card. And then I have the image file that's been sent to me by Gold Shell. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert my micro SD card. And now I just need to select the image file. So I just click on the select button here. Here's the image file, I'll just uh, select that and then click on open. Uh, we're gonna be leaving default settings everywhere here and then click on start. Get a warning message, click on okay. And it's gonna go ahead and start writing the image on the micro SD card. Okay, so the image is now burnt onto the micro SD card. We can go ahead and click on the close button. So I'm gonna remove my micro SD card and we can jump over to the next step where I would insert it into the miner. The micro SD card is now plugged in. I just have to push it in until I hear a click. That means it's all the way in, it's pretty secure. And now we can go ahead and connect the power cable. So I got the six pin adapter plugged in. And now you'll notice that the fan will rev up and rev down. And you can see over here that we have a blue and red flashing light. This is completely normal as it goes through the installation phase. They'll flash together to continuously. And once this process is done, after about a minute or so, you'll see that the blue light is the only light flashing. As you may have noticed, you don't need to have anything connected other than the power. We went through the full process. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect the power. We're gonna remove the SD card. We'll plug in the ethernet power and boot it back up and bring it back online. We're at the gold shell Katie Box Pro homepage right now. I've just reinstalled the firmware. It looks like we're good to go. So I wanna make sure this device is secure. The first thing I wanna do is change that password. So I'm gonna go up here, select English, and then we can go ahead and then click on the unlock option. It should be the default password now that we've reset it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we're gonna click on unlock. So that worked, that's good. In the pool settings, nothing is here. That's another really good sign. It's very annoying to see these ones being populated. And we're gonna go into system. I'm not changing any of the network settings right now. I can modify the IP address later on. I'm gonna scroll down here to the password section and I go ahead and type in the password for this device, which is the default password, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm gonna put in my new password and then I click on change. It should boot me out, which it just did. So now I'm gonna unlock the miner using my new password that I just entered in here. There we go, click on unlock, and we look like we're good to go. We're back at the main page. We don't have any pool settings set, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Click on the pool settings option right over here, and then click on add. So I'm gonna be using F2 pool to connect my miner. There we go, we have the default URL entered in here, and then my miner name. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put my miner name in here and the worker ID, and then my password, and then I'm gonna click on apply. It'll take a few moments here. We'll just let it sync up and connect to the pool. Looks like we're connected, we're back online. This is great. I'm gonna jump over to my pool window right now. Okay, and it is registering that I have one miner online, 001. So it looks like we're back up and running, and we'll just go over to the main screen right here and see if there's any spikes in the graph. This might take a few minutes while it calculates, and I'll just refresh the window. 
Okay, and now you can see that the hash rate is starting to be calculated and show up here on the chart. That's great. And we can also see that we're active on the pool. We have Reminder back online. You definitely wanna take all the security precautions that you can. Here are some simple things that you can do to protect yourself. The first thing is to create a very secure password. Alphanumeric, special characters, all of that mixed in together with a long password is gonna be great. Enable 2FA if available. Pools usually have this, miners don't. If it is there, enable it and set it up. Put your miner behind a router or a firewall is great and never forward ports directly to your miner. Um, set connectivity alerts, uh, that would be great if your miner ever goes offline. This typically happens when you're being attacked. It usually goes offline and comes back online with new settings. Update your firmware whenever available. If your ASIC miner does have a new security patch available, it's definitely a good idea to jump on that. And then regularly log into your miner. I usually log into my miners once a week, but it might actually be better to log in a little bit more frequently if you're suspecting some kind of issue. So everything seems to be working properly right now. I'm gonna go ahead and install this into my crypto closet where all my other miners are. Hopefully I won't run into this issue again. If you find this video useful, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and catch you on the next one.